Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India obtain the expressions for a1 and a2 let us now substitute the form of psi into the schrodinger equation so the schrodinger equation is i h bar del psi by del t is equal to h of psi h is equal to h not plus v of r comma t and psi is function of r and t which is a1 of t psi 1 r comma t plus a2 of t psi 2 of r comma t. Now, when we substitute in the Schrodinger equation, we get the following expression i h bar del of a1 by del t psi 1 plus del of psi 1 by del t a 1 plus del of a 2 by del t psi 2 plus del of psi 2 by del t a 2 on the left hand side and on the right hand side we get h naught operating on the first term gives a 1 t h naught psi 1 of r comma t. I am not going to write the variables because um, it is implicit here and we get plus v of r t operating on a 1 psi 1 plus a 2 h naught of psi 2 plus v of r comma t operating on a 2 psi 2. Since psi 1 and psi 2 are solutions of the Schrodinger equation i h bar del psi 1 by del t is equal to h naught of psi 1 and using that we can cancel these two terms on both sides. And similarly, using i h bar del psi 2 by del t is equal to h naught psi 2, we can cancel these two terms, this on the left side and this term on the right side. So, now there are two terms on the left hand side and two terms on the right hand side. So, let us write those i h bar del a 1 by del t psi 1 plus del a 2 by del t psi 2 is equal to v a 1 psi 1 plus v a 2 psi 2. We have to keep in mind that the functions a, v and psi depend on variables and they are implicit here and I am not writing them specifically, but a 1 and a 2 are functions of t, v is a function of r and t and similarly, psi is a function of r and t. In the interest of making the notation compact, I am not writing these when we have written this form here. I am going to copy this to the next page and then we will proceed with the derivation. The equation here is very similar to what you had in the page before except that instead of the partial derivative with respect to time, I have written this as a regular derivative because A does not really depend on any other variable besides time. So, here this is a regular derivative which is how it really should be. Now, the next step is to multiply both sides of this equation 
from the left by phi 2 star and integrate. This gives i h bar d a 1 by d t that goes outside the integral which depends on the spatial coordinates psi 2 star psi 1 d tau this is the spatial variable of integration and this integration is over all space and the other term is i h bar d a 2 by d t phi 2 star psi 2 d tau is equal to integral a 1 does not depend on x. So, phi 2 star v phi 1 d tau plus a 2 phi 2 star v psi 2 d tau. Since psi 1 is equal to phi 1 e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar, when we substitute this here, this first integral because of orthogonality of the phi 2 and the phi 1 becomes 0. So, this integral is 0 because phi 2 and phi 1 are orthogonal and similarly when we substitute for psi 2 here which is phi 2 e to the power of minus i e to t by h bar when we substitute here then because these functions are normalized this simplifies and we get the net result of this integral to be simply e to the power of minus i e to t by h bar. So, keeping only this part now on the left hand side and moving this e to the minus i e to t on the right hand side, we get i h bar d a 2 by d t is equal to e to the power of plus i e to t by h bar multiplied by e 1 phi 2 star v psi 1 d tau plus e 2 phi 2 star v psi 2 d tau. These are the interaction operator which we will see is just a multiplicative function. Let us copy this last line to a new page and continue with the derivation. Here is the expression from the previous page and using psi 1 is equal to phi 1 e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar here and psi 2 is equal to phi 2 e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar here we can simplify this further. This gives i h bar d a 2 by d t is equal to e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 t by h bar a 1 phi 2 star v phi 1 d tau, which is the first term in the above expression on the right hand side and the second term becomes a 2 phi 2 star v phi 2 d tau. Because the system is initially in the state psi 1, a 1 of at time t is equal to 0 is equal to 1 and a 2 at time t is equal to 0 is equal to 0. Now, since the perturbation due to the light can be considered to be small, we can consider that these values of a 1 and a 2 here 
are very close to the initial values. So, we substitute these initial values into the above expression and get the following relation for d a 2 by d t that is equal to e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 t by h bar and the second term here is set to 0. This implies that the increase in a 2 which is d a 2 by d t is primarily due to the first term here where a 1 is equal to 1 and that is because the system is initially in the state psi 1. We will now substitute the expression for this interaction energy or perturbation which is minus mu dot e and we will proceed with this derivation on the next page. So, i h bar d a 2 by d t is equal to minus e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 t by h bar and then the integral psi 2 star the perturbation mu dot e and then phi 1 d tau. Now, the e as we have seen before is e naught cosine of 2 pi nu t where nu is the frequency of the light. So, if we substitute this into the expression this further becomes e to the power of minus i e 2 minus e 1 t by h bar the cosine comes out of the integral 2 pi nu t and integral phi 2 star mu dot e phi 1 d tau. Now, both the quantities mu and e naught are vector quantities. So, they have three components x, y and z. So, the dot product of these two terms will give us three terms corresponding to the x, y and z terms. For simplicity, we will consider only the term corresponding to z and the other terms will be just similar. So, we can write them down if necessary. The term corresponding to z will simply be mu z here multiplied by E 0 z. So, considering only the z direction, the expression becomes i h bar d a 2 by d t is equal to minus e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 t by h bar cosine of 2 pi nu t multiplied by phi 2 star mu z e 0 z phi 1 d tau. And this we can write as minus e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 t by h bar cosine 2 pi nu t multiplied by mu z of 2 comma 1 e 0 z where we define this as the integral phi 2 star mu z phi 1 and this is the transition dipole moment integral. In particular, this is the transition dipole moment integral in the z direction. This is the expression we had on the previous page and using cosine of 2 pi nu t is equal to e to the power of i 2 pi nu t plus e to the power of minus i 2 pi nu t by 2. We can simplify this further. So, i h bar d a 2 by d t is equal to minus e 
i e 2 minus e 1 t by h bar multiplied by e to the power of i 2 pi nu t by 2 minus e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 t by h bar e to the power of minus i 2 pi nu t by 2 and this whole thing multiplied by the mu z transition dipole moment integral and the E 0 z. Therefore, I h bar d a 2 by d t is equal to minus half mu z to 1 E of 0 z multiplied by E to the power of I E 2 minus E 1 t by h bar e to the power of i 2 pi nu t plus e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 t by h bar and e to the power of minus i 2 pi nu t. And this we can simplify further by adding the powers in these two terms. So, for that we do this is minus half mu z to 1 e 0 z and we write this as e 2 minus e 1 t by h bar and write this as e to the power of i 2 pi nu h bar t by h bar and similarly we do that for the other, other term. using h bar is equal to h over 2 pi, we can simplify this further and so i h bar d a 2 by d t is equal to minus half mu z to 1 e of 0 z and exponential i e 2 minus e 1 plus h nu t by h bar plus e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 minus h nu t by h bar. We have copied here the expression for d a 2 by d t from the previous page and the important thing to note is that if this transition dipole moment is equal to 0, this is the transition dipole moment integral. If this is equal to 0, it implies that d a 2 by d t is equal to 0. In other words, if the transition dipole moment integral is 0, then there are no transitions from the state 1 to the state 2. That is what this implies that transitions can occur from state 1 to state 2 only when this transition dipole moment is non-zero. Now, integrating this differential equation from time 0 to t, we get the following. So, i h bar a 2 of t becomes minus half mu z to 1 e of 0 z and the integral here is e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 plus h nu t by h bar and it is an integral with respect to the time variable and we get i 2 minus e 1 plus h nu divided by h bar here plus e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 minus h nu t by h bar divided by i e 2 minus e 1 minus h nu by h bar and this integral is in the limits 0 to t. Substituting the limits of integration and simplifying this a little further, we get minus half mu z 
to 1 e 0 z and we move the i to the numerator. So, we get minus i and we move the h bar to the numerator. So, we get h bar to there and substituting for time t is equal to t, we get e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 plus h nu t by h bar and substituting for t time is equal to 0, we get e to the power of 0 which is 1 divided by e 2 minus e 1 plus h nu for this term and similarly e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 minus h nu t by h bar minus 1 divided by e 2 minus e 1 minus h nu. Now, supposing that e 2 is greater than e 1, we notice that this term e 2 minus e 1 is a positive number and when this e 2 minus e 1 becomes equal to h nu, then this term becomes close to 0. And in this case, when the difference in energy between the two states is equal to the energy associated with the light, this is called the Bohr frequency condition. And at this time, it should be clear that the second term here is the dominant term. If this becomes this second term becomes very large because the denominator becomes very small. And then under those conditions, the contribution to the A2 is greatest for the second term. So, when E2 minus E1 is equal to H nu, it is only the second term on the right hand side which contributes and we can write i h bar a 2 is equal to half i h bar nu z of 2 1 e 0 z and only the second term which is e to the power of i e 2 minus e 1 minus h nu t by h bar minus 1 divided by e 2 minus E 1 minus H nu. The probability of transition to the state 2 or the intensity of absorption from the state 1 to 2 depends on A 2 star A 2 function of t and let us write the expression for this now because we already have the expression for A 2. Using the expression for A 2 derived on the previous page we can write the expression for A 2 star A 2 which is the probability of the system being in A 2, system being in psi 2 and this is proportional to the transition dipole moment integral square and the term that you see here. Now, the numerator of this term can be simplified further by using the identity e to the power of i theta minus 1 mod squared is equal to 2 sin squared theta by 2. So, this a 2 mod squared becomes proportional to mu z 2 1 squared sin squared e 2 minus e 1 minus h nu t by 2 h bar divided by e 2 minus e 1 minus h nu whole squared. If we plot this function versus h nu, then the function looks something like this, where the peak of this function is at h nu is equal to e 2 minus 
E 1. This represents the probability of the transition from state 1 to 2. and shows that this probability is the largest when h nu is equal to the difference between the energies of the two states. So, we have seen that the probability of transition or the intensity of absorption from one state to another depends on two critical things. One is the transition dipole moment integral and the second is the light having a frequency which is equal to the difference in energy of the two states. This will be a very important concept in spectroscopy and will be applicable to all types of spectroscopy.